with any of the conversation uh, you know they can reach a point of being punctured anyway but the industry decided years ago that we're going to be competitive in the future and we're going to stay as consistent in our manufacturing and they did now I'm going to try the nugget we're delivering two ready gels and missiles we're the same today as the first one we owned in hmm. 35 years ago mm -hmm. the first fiber mobile we ever owned was at a church in Clinton Indiana and it still plays and functions like brand new. Yeah. Now I shoot, you know, I'm sitting here at the piano center, I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot when I <laughs> endorse him such a high horse. Now I do tell folks you you don't want to go out and buy some cheap diesel diesel. You want one that has a true rated weighted action, so it feels like a real hammer as you're letting off in there. You want one that is truly digitally sound with a real brand PM, at least one. And by that I mean recording that's more accurate than a Blu-ray disc player. And um, because there are, there are some cheap models out there with junk on them. And, and a lot of times, I didn't either, but pastors didn't even know what, what's the difference, you know? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> oh, they got one. They, they, there's a, uh, one company out there that's produced one, and they, they took one of the world's finest ears into the studio that was darkened where they couldn't see what they were hearing. It fooled every single one of them. They thought they were hearing. It almost embarrassed you. You'd almost see an expression on their face when they turned the lights on. <laughs> it was embarrassing, but they didn't know it was a, a digital. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome to Sunday night service here at Salisbury Baptist Temple. We do hope everyone has a great day so far. Certainly good seeing you in church with us tonight. I want to welcome those that are listening by way of live stream. We're glad you could tune us in this evening as well. Let's take our green songbooks, number 200. He's a wonderful Savior to me, number 200. Let's stand together as we start our service this evening. Page 200, he's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. So wonderful for He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a friend so true, so patient and so kind. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Everything I need in Him I always find. He's a wonderful Savior to me, so wonderful. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Stanza number four, please. Dearer grows the love of Jesus every day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace while pressing on my way. He's a wonderful Savior to me. So wonderful for He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Thank you, Brother Todd. Appreciate that. Man, I love all that music. Amen. And uh, Brother Todd is starting to take saxophone lessons next week. Amen. 
Can you see Brother Todd up here just going away with that saxophone? Can you see that? Come on now. Can you see it? That'd be good, all right? That'd be good. <laughs> he can do both. He'll be up here just swinging his hand, playing a saxophone. Amen. Man, what is this right here? Is this a... Oh, 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 don't touch it. It will. I thought, I thought the trick was to try to get my body through those holes there. And uh, that'd, be, that'd be a real trick, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Woo, mercy. Man, oh, man. Okay, I won't touch anything. All right, man, oh, man. I'm a little afraid now. I might disappear. <laughs> Some of you like that, wouldn't you? All right. Oh, mercy. Anyway, well, praise the Lord. Uh, been a wonderful day, wonderful day. We praise the Lord uh, for the visitors uh, in the service and uh, this morning and then uh, and then tonight. Uh, we're delighted uh, to have uh, Walter over here. Walter, so good to have you. Watkinson, and uh, he goes way back with friends with the McGilliards living in the area now and hopefully uh, Lord willing, maybe he'll find a church home here at SBT, and uh, we're delighted and uh, so glad to have him here and visiting tonight, and we have some other folks as well, and uh, and uh, we're delighted to have you folks in the back over there. What's your names? John and Jennifer, so good to have you folks tonight as well, and uh, thank you all for being here, and uh, let's give these visitors a hand. Would you do that tonight? We're so glad to have you. We welcome you, and are so grateful that you'd be here tonight. Let's go ahead and pray, and as we do, let's remember these folks in prayer uh, here tonight. Father, we thank you so much for a wonderful day already. So good to be together again tonight. We ask your blessing upon this service, and we pray, dear Holy Spirit, that you'd use your word and the preaching of your word tonight, and the music tonight, and all that's done tonight to remind us of your love, and uh, Lord, all that you have done for us. And uh, Lord, to remind us of Calvary. What a great message this morning, Brother Bobby preached. To remind us of Calvary and what you did for us. And that ought to be our greatest motivation and drive. And that is to serve you for all that you've done for us on Calvary. We ask your blessing tonight be with Donna Brittingham. We pray for your healing hand upon her, Father. Please help her there in the hospital to have full recovery. Uh, we pray, Father, for Paul Deku Jr. as well, that you'd help him uh, also in the ICU. They're up in Pennsylvania area, Father, with this COVID and bacteria infection. We pray for healing for him. Be with John Agnew. We pray for his recovery from his heart attack. And uh, Kevin Malone with his upcoming surgery on November 23rd. And then for Mary Lou, Father, we pray for her and her recovery from leukemia. And then for Ruth Purdue, Lord, please help her to get stronger and stronger to be able to, uh, Lord, uh, to be able to walk and, and get around. We pray your blessing there and uh, just be with them. We love you, Lord, tonight. And uh, help us, Lord, encourage us, revive us, Lord. Help us to love you more when we leave than when we came. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. And again, we're so delighted you're here. Brother Todd's going to come, and we're going to sing another song. Hey. Let's turn to 196 in our song books. I will sing the wondrous story. Page 196, we'll remain seated. We'll sing stanzas number one and two tonight. Page 196, and we can remain seated as we sing. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory. Stanza two is the last. I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Threw his love, mean arms around me, drew me back into his way. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory Gathered by the crystal sea Alrighty, uh, we want to, uh, I do want to say a special thanks tonight 
uh, to Aaron Roberts and Renee Perdue and for uh, the work that they did the last couple days uh, to help Brianna and uh, Simpson, who married uh, Jared Labar yesterday here at the altar. And uh, it was such a blessing. Uh, they, the, these ladies um, really, really helped in a tremendous way. Brianna uh, needed a lot of help and to be able to bring this thing uh, to its fruition yesterday here at the altar, and uh, and I appreciate Miss Aaron and you and Miss Renee what you did. Uh, it was just a beautiful time, beautiful ceremony. I'm so proud of, of Brianna and Jared. Uh, they've come a long way in the Lord, and they're just growing. And we're just thankful for the decisions they're making for the Lord, and they're looking forward to God blessing them in the future. But thank you so much. It made it so important what you ladies did, and all that others that helped as well. I also want to read to you a note here from uh, Rookie and Karen Dyes and on behalf of uh, Rookie's mom's uh, funeral. Uh, he says, SBT family, thank you so much for the flower arrangement you sent when mom passed. We appreciate all the prayers and concern from our friends and church family. We love this church. Thank you, Rookie and Karen Dyes. And so uh, that's a, a blessing. And uh, thank you to everybody who participated with that as well and helped with that also. And then also just pray for uh, tomorrow. We're looking forward to a school course uh, as we continue tomorrow morning. But pray for uh, one of our bus children. Uh, Michael's going into fifth grade, and tomorrow he begins. And uh, he's a young man off of uh, Rick and Alice's route. As I mentioned this morning, we praise the Lord for the bus ministry. His, his mom, actually foster mom, soon to be adopted mom, uh, was a bus child. And now uh, she is... Uh, you know, Mike come, my little Michael comes every week. They pick him up on the bus, and uh, but he'll be starting school tomorrow. And he wanted to come to Salisbury Baptist Academy and be in Christian school. And so what a blessing. And so pray for little Michael tomorrow as he gets started uh, with school. I know uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And then let me just remind you, uh, if we could here, uh, just upcoming uh, things here, make sure you get a bulletin uh, just so that you can be reminded of what's up and coming. Uh, we're, of course, uh, we're continuing on the stay, uh, stay on track challenge. The tracks are in the back available for you, uh, and it's uh, what a blessing it is to go to some places and see that uh, folks have already received the tracks. And uh, folks are really busy uh, and getting the gospel out, and what a blessing that is. Let's continue to do that through the month of December, uh, and uh, we'll get some Christmas tracks here soon that we could use those uh, for the Christmas season. Don't forget about the Facing Your Finances seminar this Friday and Saturday, Friday night from 6.30, I mean from 6 to 8.30, and then Saturday morning from 8.30 to 12 with Dr. Mark Bushy, and uh, it is going to be tremendous. There's no cost to it. And, uh, but if you come Friday and Saturday, Friday night and Saturday, you'll get his book on pleasing God with your personal finances. It's a tremendous book. I told you this morning, and uh, as I've read it, and a lot of uh, just practical principles from the Word of God. And you want God to bless your finances so that you can invest more in his work. And then God blesses you more in turn. And it's just cyclic. Amen? And, uh, and how the Lord works that way. And so uh, please get signed up. There's a table in the back, uh, and you can get uh, signed up there, and just let us know that you'll be coming. And then also, uh, don't forget about next Sunday. Looking forward to a special day, Patriotic Sunday, as we honor the veterans and their families. We'll have a special gift card for them, but also, I believe, a very important book uh, that it's called Wounded Spirits, a biblical approach to dealing with effects of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. This is a great book. I've read it uh, here the last couple of days. And it has, in each chapter, they're not long chapters, they cover a variety of subjects uh, for those who struggle with PTSD. And uh, it's not, this is nothing new. And uh, uh, the, this, uh, this problem has been around for a long time, uh, just not for military, but for those who have accidents and maybe have had issues when they were younger and so forth. And uh, boy, there's uh, the, uh, the Bible and suicide, the Bible on fear and anxiety, the Bible on guilt and survivor's guilt, uh, the Bible on anger and irritability and nightmares and flashbacks and avoiding conflict. It's just a tremendous book here. And then each chapter has a little, uh, little um, uh, like a, uh, a worksheet that you can do personally or you can do with somebody else. 
and uh, to get you thinking. And so that's going to be given away also this Sunday to every, uh, every veteran and, uh, and for their uh, family as well uh, this coming Sunday. So we look forward to that and upcoming. And other things, please be sure to get a bulletin so you can be aware of those things. And uh, we're just looking forward uh, to the Lord blessing. Invite folks to come and, uh, and ask them to come be with you, be your guests, sit with you in the service. And, uh, and be a blessing to them in that way. And so we look forward to what the Lord's going to do. And again, we're thankful that you're here tonight. Thank you for coming. It's been a great day with the, Brother McGilliard and uh, Brother Lee and Miss Mary and Miss Caitlin. We praise the Lord uh, for their ministry, and you'll be blessed tonight. Brother Todd? Let's stand together as we sing our theme song for the year, Constantly Abiding as we prepare for our evening offering. It's page number 336 in our psalm books. 336. We'll sing stanza number two as the ushers come forward, please. All the world seem to sing of a Savior and King when peace sweetly came to my heart. Troubles all fled away and my night turned to day. Blessed Jesus, how glorious Thou art. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to give uh, to your work, and we pray, Lord, that you would, uh, Lord, bless the tithes and offerings, and uh, Lord, we thank you uh, for the faithfulness, Lord, of your people. Even though we were interrupted for a couple of weeks, Father, uh, Lord, are finding their way to get their tithes and offerings to you, Lord, and and here at your church. And we just thank you, Father, and pray you'd bless, uh, Lord, uh, the giver and the gifts, Lord, give us wisdom uh, to use your finances wisely, Lord. We thank you so much for the faithfulness, and Lord, that we can continue to work even through uh, this season of time. Thank you, Lord, that folks have given sacrificially to the missions to be able to keep our missionaries on the field and, and serving you and all around the world. And Lord, we ask you now to bless this offering tonight in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. much. Let me do one more thing, two more things before uh, we continue on here tonight, and I meant to do this before now. I do want to mention to you this coming Sunday, we're going to have a red, white, and blue contest, so you can dress in the most red, white, and blue this coming Sunday for Patriotic Sunday. And then also this morning, we uh, had the opportunity to be able to say thank you to our workers. All right, this morning, through the month of November, we are uh, taking each Sunday 
and uh, a different group of workers, and we rather than do them all on one Sunday, a different group this morning, we did our uh, Sunday school teachers and workers, and then our bus workers, and then our media folks, sound and media folks. And so uh, if you uh, were not able to be in the service this morning, we have folks that help in the back, a nursery, a junior church, and you are a bus worker, a Sunday school teacher, a bus worker, or you work in the media. Most were here this morning, was able to, that was in this service this morning, it weren't in junior church and other places serving and so, but if you were in some other place serving this morning, weren't able to be in the service, we wanna honor you tonight. And so if you'll please stand up if you would, and uh, we won't have you come all the way to the front, okay? We won't do that to you tonight, but uh, if you'll stand up, that's Miss Janice over here, all right? I'll start calling you out, Miss Janice. Come on now. We appreciate Miss Janice and Brother Paul and you, all of you. We thank God. I need some help, Todd, if you'll help me with this. And uh, we praise the Lord for all of our Sunday school teachers and uh, who teach the children and uh, as they come in and, uh, and on the buses. And we praise the Lord as they come in with their families and uh, for you to be prepared to teach the Word of God. Uh, no greater ministry than we have when the Word of God is being taught and preached here at SBT. And we praise the Lord for you. And thank God for the work that you do and uh, in the uh, lives of these children, teens, and adults. And so we are certainly thankful. Uh, what an investment you make. You make an investment that's eternal that can never go away. Amen? We, in, we buy a lot of things, and we invest in a lot of things that will burn up at the end. But what we put into the hearts and lives of these children and young people and the adults of our church and feeding them the word of God will never go away. And so would you give these folks that stood, would you give them a very big hand here tonight? Thank you so much, all of you. And uh, we appreciate uh, all that you do and praying and working with your young people and, uh, and the adults in our church through, the, through these ministries. Again, we are so glad to have Brother McGilliard and uh, the uh, STEM family with us. And so uh, I'll just say, Miss, Miss Mary, where's Miss Mary? Is up here, right? Miss Mary, what a blessing. And y'all have uh, seen Brother Lee. Brother Lee, if you'll stand, please, as well. And then Miss Caitlin, if you'll please stand back over here. And uh, these folks are a tremendous help to Brother Bobby. And, uh, and we appreciate their ministry and music. And uh, what a tremendous blessing. When he comes, he, he uh, tunes all of our pianos, Brother the Lee does, and we appreciate that. It helps us here, and uh, but uh, we're so thankful for Brother Bobby. And how long have you been coming here? You were coming before I came here as pastor. How long have you been about? Do you know about how long, Brother Purdue? Would you know how long? Several. What's that? About 20 years. Be I've been here 15, so so it'd be before I came. And uh, so we praise the Lord for these folks. Would you give them a really big hand as they come tonight? And share with us tonight. Brother Bobby, it's yours. You got it. Amen. Well, how I've enjoyed all the years that we've been coming here. And... Uh, what a joy. I love this place, and uh, you mean a lot to us. And it's been a, a blessing then when uh, Brother Lado came here, and uh, him and I have become close friends, and I thank God for him and his ministry here. And uh, I really, most places I don't do the gospel illustrations every night. I do when sort of Lord leads me or something, but he likes them. Uh, in fact, uh, I think it was for a chapel service. Uh, first time when he was here, I was doing a chapel service, and I did something, and I just, I, he was sitting over yonder. I, I still remember the look on his face, whatever I did. He, and uh, so uh, uh, with that, he said, that, that time he said, hey, do that same thing Sunday. And uh, so we did it Sunday. I usually don't do that. I don't do it twice. Once it's a trick. Twice it's an education. <laughs> but uh, we did. And, and so I, 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 I love doing that kind of thing. I've always loved it even when I was a kid. And then after I got saved, you know, you think 
there's certain things that you can't be used. And then I found out how that God can use about anything. And I'm glad he uses a wretch like me. Amen. And he can use you too. And I'm going to preach something about that here in a little while. But uh, I tell you what, it's, it's amazing what God can do. Uh, Stuart Hamlin. Now, I want to sing a song that I, I love. Stuart Hamlin was a disc jockey out in Los Angeles, California. Celebrity, you might say. And uh, back, we're talking about way on back yonder, the first tent meetings that Billy Graham held out there. He had a big tent. And, uh, Stuart Hamlin went down there to maybe just to, you know, make fun of what was going on or whatever. Didn't think much about it. But instead, <laughs> he got impressed. Came, hey, came back to the service that night. In fact, got under conviction. Now listen, went off on a hunting trip, trying to escape the conviction. And uh, I've seen a lot of people do that over the years. Uh, God gets a hold of their heart. They don't come back the next night. They stay at home thinking they can get away from it. Well, you might get away from me, but you won't get away from him, amen. And it just so happened that that meeting went on, and Stuart got back from his hunting trip and thought he'd go back down there again. Boy, that got him in trouble because God got a hold of his heart, went down that old sawdust trail and trusted Jesus. But you know, Unlike the celebrities today that claim they're saved and they still live like the devil. Boy, he was different. He was changed. But he still lived out there in Hollywood. Uh, you might not know this about this old song. He lived right next door to the Duke, John Wayne. And John was over at his house one afternoon. He was in the backyard talking and John Wayne looked at Stuart Hamlin and said, Stu, I don't know what happened to you. He said, you're so different. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't go to the wild Hollywood parties anymore. You don't drink. You don't act like you used to act. He said, I, I just can't understand what could change somebody like that. And Stuart Hamlin looked John Wayne in the eye and he said, John, it is no secret what God can do. And I'm glad that's true, amen. Ah, uh, John said, you know, that'd make a good song. And so Stuart Hamlin went in after John left, went over, went in the back door of his house, sat down at the piano, and in just a few moments, wrote this song that I think somebody, if I'm still around, I'll still be singing it when Jesus comes. And I, I'm amazed how many young people never even heard the thing. And yet all you older folk, you up there with me, all right, you, you know it. You know the words. And truly, the world needs to know it's no secret what God can do. Let's sing the chorus. Y'all sing it with me. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Yes, he will. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Well, the chimes of time bring out the news another day is through someone slipped and fell was that someone you you may have longed for added strength your courage to renew well do not be disheartened for i bring hope to you sing it with me now it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. And with his arms wide open, just 
just let him pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Well, you know, over the years, one of, one of my favorite places to sing this old song is in nursing homes. I know, to be politically correct, extended care facilities. And I often go into those places and we sing this old song because those folks know it from way on back there. And you know, I get amazed, especially on this second verse, because there's so many of those folks that they feel like they've just been shuffled off and left there to die. They've been taken out of their homes. They're there in a strange place. And the sad thing is sometimes that's almost true. Many of them, even their own family, don't visit them. They're feeling so alone, away from home. You know, we sing a song down south sometimes that anywhere is home, as long as my Lord is there. And that's sort of part of the theme of this second verse. And I love to watch a smile, Brother Purdue, come across those faces of those old folks as they realize that no, even though everybody else might forsake them, thank God Hebrew said, Jesus said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm glad, thank God, he's still there. And oh, I'm glad anywhere is home as long as he's there. Well, there is no night, for in his light, you'll never walk alone. You can always feel at home, wherever you may roam. And there is no power that can conquer you while God is on your side. Just take him and his promise, don't run away. done for others he'll do for you and with his arms wide open he'll pardon you yes he will it is no secret what God can do yes it is no secret what God can I'm glad, thank God, it's no secret. And I'm glad, thank God, can, God can do the same thing for you. Amen. And uh, I hope he will, even tonight. I've enjoyed these few days that we've gotten to be around here. I got a little bit of rest, praise the Lord. And you pray for the meeting coming up down in Virginia now next week. And... Uh, I want to see God bless and move. And, and hey, it's no secret. God's still on the throne. He's still able, amen. The Bible said he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. And so I'm, I'm excited about what God's going to do, amen. I hope you'll let him work in your life and have his way in your life. Maybe straighten things out. Now, if you were here last year, uh, like I said, I've done, I, I may have done more magic here than just about anywhere else as far as, and I tell you, it's, it's just a trick, okay? Nothing supernatural about it, but uh, I, I've done a lot of that here. And uh, last year, my theme was the puzzle of life. And... Uh, I told you probably the most famous puzzle of all is that one right there, Rubik's Cube. And uh, I'm glad God is able to straighten out your life, no matter how messed up it is. In fact, last year I took one of those, put it in a box, and in one second it was worked. Hmm. 
Ah, somebody said, that's amazing, Brother Bobby. He said, but you had to put it in that box. I couldn't see it get worked. Well, I'm glad, thank God, when God works in a person's life, many times it's open for everybody to see. Brother Lee's got a little tray here with a bunch of flowers on it. Wallpaper. <laughs> hey, got a bunch of flowers. Reminds me of the one who made the flowers and creation and, and all life. Hey, if you have life, it comes from him. Without him, you're dead in trespasses and in sins. Your life probably like that Rubik's Cube right there. It's a mess, amen? But I'm glad, thank God, I know one who can straighten it out. If I let Lee hold that, raise it up a little bit there where they can see. I, I, I'm glad. 45 years. 45 years. You're doing a good job, brother Lee. Good job. Here's the thing, though. If your life is like that cube right there, it's a mess. And that tray represents God. Hey, all you got to do is take your mess, give it to him. And guess what? He'll straighten it out. Amen. 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 Now that's, that's for you last year that, uh, man, you said, well, he put it in a box and somehow or another it came out done. Well, this way you got to see it done. Amen. I'm glad God straightened out my life 57 years ago. Amen. Uh, yeah, called me to preach. October the 20th, 1968, I surrendered. It was a Wednesday night. I surrendered to do what God wanted me to do. I had every excuse in the world. Uh, I never thought God could use somebody like me. And I'm thankful that he called me. Amen. I, I actually wanted to be an accountant. Now, can you imagine? Yeah, you laugh. Can you imagine, Brother Bobby, a certified public accountant sitting at a desk and pushing a pencil all day? Oh, I would be miserable. God knew what I needed and what would be best for me. So he called me to be an evangelist. Amen. And uh, so now for over 50 years, that's all we've done. In fact, most evangelists uh, that I know of, most of them are in a meeting and then out of meeting. In a meeting, out of meeting. We've never done that. I'd rather put my meetings together in an area. And uh, sometimes I've been gone three, four, or five months at a time before getting back home and a meeting every night, and uh, I just want to, that's just the way God's directed me to do it, all right? But I want folks to know about Jesus. That's why today I told you about Calvary. You see, now, I scared the preacher a bit ago, didn't mean to, but uh, sometimes I do have things that can hurt you or get, get you in trouble, in fact, I hate to tell you this, but I will. I had an a illustration that I used to use. I hadn't used it in a long time, but it was a long, I, I had an illustration that I was with a preacher down in Florida, uh, Cocoa Beach at the time, and he wanted to know how it was done. And... Uh, I might have told him keep him from getting hurt. And I'm, I'm telling you, this is the truth. You wouldn't believe this, but he, he decided to, some of my stuff that I'd left there, he decided to check it out on Sunday afternoon. And uh, he, I wouldn't know this except his two sons were with him. <laughs> they were interested too. And uh, he didn't know how it, some of the things were done. I had this particular illusion that was electric. Plugged in. 
120 volts. And I, I knew how to handle it and what to do and the way the thing worked, but he didn't. And his boys said he did a holy dance. <laughs> he got into that thing and grabbed those wires that he knew nothing about, and next thing you know, he was getting 120 volts. And uh, so he got a jolt out of it. And uh, seriously, I, I do every now and then. You saw fire up here this morning. Uh, you never know what I may have ready, so I, I try to keep folks from fooling with anything so they don't get in trouble. But anyway, he was liking this box here. And let me tell you what I got that there for. You'll notice the bottom of it is red. It's on a little red platform. That red always, when you're fooling with red, I always have to think about the blood. The precious blood of Jesus. If I was going to read a verse to you, I'd probably take you to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. For the latter part of that verse said, The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from how much? Oh, you don't really think that's all of it, do you? All sin. It cleanseth us from A-double-L, all sin. Now, if that be true, and it is, because that's what God said, if the blood is what cleanses us from all sin, then how much sin is left for the baptistry waters to wash away. Not a bit. I, I, I told Brother Leto, I, I'll have trouble next week saying things like that. Uh, but I, I, we won't go into that. But anyway, uh, hey, if the blood cleanseth us from all sin, how much sin is left for my good works to take care of? None. None. Amen. It's the blood. It's the blood. Now we need to get down to the bottom line. Now you'll notice the bottom of this thing is red. Well, the bottom line is you've got to get to the blood. To the blood of Jesus. But you know what? The devil doesn't want you there. I've got a Solid piece, stainless steel. And there's a slot right there that I can put it through and there's no holes in that stainless steel. In other words, no way you can get down to the bottom of things. I don't know about you. By the way, this year... I think I'm going to go from the puzzle of life to some of the problems of life. That's why this morning I talked about the different problems, you know, financial, spiritual, physical, and all these problems, the only way to really go through them is with the Holy Spirit of God, letting God take care of it. Now, with that piece of steel in there, if I was to take this block, it's, a, it's made out of plastic, I think. Anyway, I've got a block that, well, if that block wanted to get down to the bottom, it wouldn't be possible. Something's in the way. You know what, the old devil's really bad about putting things in your way. Keeping you from getting down to the very bottom of things. And what is that? That's the blood of Jesus. I'm not going to heaven because I'm so good. I'm going to heaven because of the blood of Jesus. I'm resting in that blood. But I tell you what, the devil puts a lot of things in the way. And I'm just an old, like that block... I'm just no blockhead. Watch this. Let's see if we can't get that block down to where it needs to be. Watch. Ah. 
It could be that maybe if we prayed enough, no. We just better believe and ask God to help that thing to get right on through there. Man, every time I watch that thing happen, I say, how in the world did it ever get through that? But I'm glad, thank God, it did. And now, when I think of this old blockhead myself, I'm glad I'm resting in the blood of Jesus. I'm trusting him. Hey, that's, the, that's where you need to get tonight. You need to get to the fact that, hey, it's not you or me. It's what Jesus did. Shed his precious blood. See, you and I, we're not able to get it done. But thank God Jesus did. In fact, just this summer, I, wasn't, I, I was going to stop right there, but I'm just in a mood right now. I had a friend of mine that made this. In fact, I'm thinking about getting some because it's not really that much of a trick as it is a tremendous illustration. Uh, he claims that God actually gave him the design. It's a tube that's got sand in it. Oh, like sand through the hourglass. So were the days of our lives. You know what? God made man out of the dust of the earth. And this is an interesting thing to me. I like this. Because I look at that sand in the bottom... I've got a gold ring up here. That's the gold standard. That's where we ought to get to. And in fact, I can sort of shake that sand, get it up almost that ring, but this bottom is black, and since mankind basically is in darkness, he always falls back. In fact, it's a law, <laughs> the law of gravity. That can't get up to here. Well, this is God's standard. Guess what? Man will never measure up to God's standard. Why? Because all have sinned and come what? Short of the glory of God. But thank God there was one who was both God and man. The Lord Jesus Christ. Man in darkness, never able to measure up. The red ring up here at the top reminds me again of the blood that Jesus shed. What I preach this morning, through what Jesus did at Calvary when he shed his blood, you know what? He did that to turn the whole world upside down. And yes, if you're trusting his blood, resting in him like we illustrated, that's the only way you'll ever measure up. All have come short of the glory of God. But I thank God through Jesus Christ, through his shed blood, we measure up. He sees me now as just like his son, Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm going to heaven, amen? And uh, boy, we've overcome the law. We've overcome all the obstacles. Now, thank God, we meet God's standard. I'm going to heaven because I'm in Jesus. And I hope tonight you are too. Hey, well, take your Bibles tonight. And I've been preaching, as I almost always do, to those that are not saved, I do that a lot because I'm an evangelist. My main thrust is trying to get somebody to trust Jesus. 
And that's why Wednesday night we preached on the ghost in the graveyard. Why this morning I preached about Calvary, where Jesus paid the price so that we might be saved. But before I leave here, this I'll be pulling out of here, Lord willing, in the morning, early, heading for Horntown. You pray for us and keep praying for us till we get back here again. Amen. And I always look forward to being here. I really do. This is one of my favorite places to be. And uh, always has been. Uh, ever since I first came, first time I came here, I tried to call Brother Purdue. I didn't know where to go or what to do. I just wanted to spend the night here. And I found the plugs out there and the hookups. And uh, I tried to call him. He wasn't there, but I got his wife. But boy, I'm praying for Sister Ruth. Y'all keep praying for her, amen. Uh, I said, I'm trying to spend the night at the, I want to spend the night at church. And I said, I told her where I was parked. I said, I was just trying to get a hold of the preacher, make sure it's all right. She said, it's all right, Brother Bobby. She said, if anybody says anything, you tell them Ruth said it was all right. <laughs> I, that's what she said. Well, I did. I, anybody said, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, Miss Ruth said it's all right. I never got any questions about it, amen. And I co connected up and parked and, Ah, what a good time we've had over the years since then. Uh, not just me passing through, but when I got to be here and uh, do some things for church and for the school, and I love to do all that kind of thing anyway. But I just want to be used of God any way I can, whether it be through the illustrations, through the sorry singing or whatever. Uh, I just want God to use me as long as I'm still breathing. As long as there's breath in my body, I want to serve Him. With that in mind, take your Bibles tonight, please, and turn with me over to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And you see... Usually I'm just preaching, trying to get people to get saved. And certainly if you're not saved, you ought to get saved tonight. And I'm sure God will speak to your heart whether I address the situation or not. I hope you'll just listen. Do what God would have you to do. But before I get away from here, especially, I guess I, I've been blessed around here because of all the people that minister. Amen. Uh, Brother Paul back there, what a blessing. Uh, all these years, and Brother Purdue and Brother Scott, and all these people that play the instruments, I enjoy playing with them. I enjoy having a good time, amen, in the house of the Lord and, and doing whatever God let me do. I just, I come here and I'm just ready to do whatever preacher wants, amen. You better listen to the pastor, the man of God. I used, to, <laughs> I used to tell folks, hey, if my pastor told me while I'm preaching tonight, Brother Bobby, I want you to stand on your head in the corner. I wouldn't ask him why. I'd say, which corner? Amen. And that's just the way I always have been with my pastor, the man of God. Of course, he's in heaven now. Uh, we talk many times uh, let me just talk to you a little bit. We talked many times about what he was going to say at my funeral. We never, never discussed what I'd say at his. Never discussed that. Not one time, I don't guess. And uh, so, it was strange. I preached his funeral. And uh, strange, I, you know what I told him? Brother Jim told me one time that when I died and he preached my funeral, I said, we talked about that. He was going to tell the folks, said this, pointing to that casket, my body, he's going to tell them this really is not Bobby McGillier. 
That's really not Bobby McGilliard. He, he said, this is just the shell. The nut's gone. <laughs> so I fixed him. I got to say that at his funeral. <laughs> Amen. I told him that's what he always said. He's going to say at mine, so I told them at his. But he was my best friend. We've been all over the world together. In fact, uh, we preached a number of times throughout India. And uh, then, well, I, I, I really just need to stay here in the States. I'm getting too old and feeble, I guess. And so I, I preacher never went back to India. He said, the only way I'll go to India is if the event... <laughs> He called me the evangelist. He said, if the evangelist can go with me. Because, uh, boy, we worked so perfectly together in India. Uh, he'd look over at me before service sometime. He said, you got the message? And I said, no. And he said, good, because God's laid one on my heart. And he'd preach. And other times he'd say, you got the message? I said, oh, yeah. And most of the time it was where there were people that were lost and God would let me give the gospel, amen, and try to reach some folks for Jesus, amen. Others, though, they needed a pastor, and he's the greatest pastor ever was, and he'd preach and, and build up the church and help folk. Well, back to what I was telling you a minute ago, what a blessing to see all this crowd up here this morning that are being used of God and all those that are working in the bus ministry and all the other ministries around here, the Sunday school and everything else. Ah, <laughs> I, I had a pastor friend of mine, young fella, took a church the other day. I told him, I said, son, try not to do anything. He said, what do you mean, Brother Bobby? I said, you're going to that new church I said, try not to do anything. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, preach, of course. But I said, try to stay away from everything else. Because I knew this church. I said, anything you'll do, they'll let you do. I said, if you don't watch it, you, just won't, you won't be just the preacher. You'll also be the one that mows the grass. The one that cleans the restrooms, the, ones that, the one that vacuums the church. I'm talking about things that, hey, according to the word of God, that's not the preacher's job. That's why they got deacons, so that he could spend his time in the word of God and studying and preparing to give you the message, amen? So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for churches where there are people that are serving, driving the buses, teaching the Sunday school classes. Others, that's the way it ought to be. Uh, that's the way it ought to be. In fact, the more you can take off of this man, the better. Amen. And so it's been a thrill. But I want to talk especially to you that maybe are serving. Turn in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and look at verse 27. The last verse. Chapter 9, Paul said, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hey, I'm like Paul, I don't want to be a castaway. I was miserable when our government shut down so many churches and I couldn't even go preach. We couldn't have services. I, I don't like just sitting at home. Uh, there, there's two times when I want to preach. When somebody gets up and they're doing a bang-up job, I said, man, that's great. I want to preach. Then sometimes I hear somebody doing a sorry job. I say, man, he ought to sit down and let me preach. Amen. So, yeah, you're right. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, anytime I get a chance, I want to preach. 
Somebody said, Brother Bobby will preach at the drop of a hat, and if you don't watch it, he'll drop the hat. Yeah. I don't want to be a castaway. I want to be used till God calls me home. Now, let me tell you this. When we think of a castaway, I believe many times it's not really God that does the castaway. Let me prove that to you. Turn with me to the book of Luke. I'll get into the message in just a moment. But the Bible tells us in the book of Luke, chapter 14, the Bible says there in verse 34, salt is good. Man, I'm glad God said that. I like salt. Miss Becky did too. Doctor said don't use so much salt. Mm -hmm. And so, didn't faze her in the least. In fact, hey, I, she's gone now, but Miss Mary over there, we go out to eat all the time, Brother Lee and Mary and Caitlin and myself, and I, first thing she said, don't use so much salt. I got news for her. Salt is good. God said so. Don't tell me it's bad for me. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? Oh, I, I can talk. I, I'm not preaching about that salt tonight. But he said there's some that, even though there's salt, listen to the last verse. It's neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill. Now get this phrase. But men cast it out. Didn't say God cast them out because Jesus said, All that come unto me I will in no wise cast you out. But there are people who, yeah, they're salt. They're saved. But they've so messed up that they can't do the job that they could have done otherwise. Because men have cast them out. Come on. Now, I don't want to be that castaway. I don't want to be that one that's, by the way, he said, you're not even fit for the land, nor yet for the dung hill. I'm from Tennessee. Obviously. He said, some would not make good lime to put in the outhouse. That's the dung hill. The dung hill. Uh, you, you can use salt. Most time back home we use lime. Yeah, uh, I've been in many of them. In fact, the church I'm going to be at next week up until last year, that's all they had was out an outhouse. I'm there every year. It's, hey, it's a nice outhouse. Two parts, men on one side, women on the other. One of the nicest outhouses I've ever seen. But I don't like it. I've been in enough of them. Come on. Besides that, I hate spiders. Spiders like outhouses. Not only that, every now and then, a snake gets in. <laughs> Not long with me, because when he comes in, I'm going out. One way or another. But I... I they, last year, they finally got indoor plumbing. Hallelujah. I felt like I was in heaven. Amen. Uh, but anyway, hey, wouldn't it be bad if you were such that he said, you're not even fit for the dung hill. Not even fit to be dumped in the outhouse. I don't want to be that kind of salt. Paul said, I, lest 
by any means I should become a castaway. Give me just a few moments. Let me preach a sort of an interesting message, something you've probably never heard anything like. I want to preach to you tonight on how to avoid the junkyard. How to avoid the junkyard. Like I said, I've been preaching to you that are not saved, try to get you to trust Jesus, and I'm still doing that, but I want to preach to the Christians. We've got so many that God's using, and I don't want you to ever become a castaway. I don't ever want to be, as some people describe it, being set on the shelf, not used. There's a good verse in 2 Timothy chapter 2 where the Bible says there in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, Boy, if you're in the church, you're in a great house, amen. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. I want to be a vessel of honor. In fact, he said, if a man therefore purge himself of these, from these, Hey, you work at it, and you can be a vessel of honor. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Hallelujah. That's that's what I want to be. Oh, I don't want to be a button jar. (laughs) Oh, sister, you nodding your head. Laughed a little. She knows what I'm talking about. You see, some of you ladies, you had this beautiful vase. Or if you paid a lot for it, it wasn't a vase, it was a vase. You had that vase on your coffee table until some clumsy oaf like Brother Bobby knocked it over, knocked a big chip out of it, and you couldn't stand to leave it sitting out there in that place of honor on on that coffee table, but you loved it too much to throw it away. I'm glad God doesn't throw us away. I'm glad there's still a use for every one of us. But you know what you did? You took that beautiful vase (laughs) that's now cracked or broken. (laughs) Yeah, I'm his vessel. I'm cracked big time. Uh, You take it and you put it in the closet on the shelf, and it becomes your button jar. You find a button. Throw it in the button jar. Find a safety pin, throw it in the button jar. You got all kinds of little things, but that's what that's there for. It used to be out yonder on the coffee table, the center of attention, but now it's just a button jar sitting on the shelf. I'd rather be out doing what I can for Jesus, being that vessel of honor. I don't want to be that castaway. Are you with me? I just, that's just a little bit of a foundation for what I'm telling you tonight. Because I know a, a lot of Christians who once were used of God, but now they found themselves in the junkyard. Now, I, I know what it is to be in the junkyard. Because the vehicles I've had over the years, I had to go to the junkyard. Couldn't afford to buy new parts. I've been out there many a night, many a day, taking off the part that I needed and hoping it was still good enough that it'd work on my vehicle. But that junkyard is filled with vehicles that used to run down the highway, but now they're just sitting there rusting. I don't want to rust out. I'd rather wear out. Amen. Amen. Now they're in the junkyard. It didn't happen all overnight. And I want to give you some things tonight to tell you how they got in the junkyard. Come on now, you men especially, you know what I'm talking about. How many of you men ever went out and got something out of the junkyard? Come on. Yeah. 
They're a good thing to have. But oh, think about the one who put that thing in there. They cast it away. It was useless. In fact, I've got some vehicles in the junkyard right now. Seriously. By the way, you've already taken up all the offering for me, so I'll tell you this. Pray. That old bus of mine out there is 20 years old, and it's coming apart at the seams. On the way up here to Virginia, Miss Becky, Miss Mary, she's riding with me, and she thought, she kept telling me, don't worry, if your chair behind the driver's seat goes through the floor, I'll catch you. Now, if you think that little lady there can hold me up, something's wrong. No, I'd probably be dragging the, the pavement, but... I'm glad she's caring, but that's because my floor is right there is coming apart. A lot of it's coming apart. I'm praying earnestly about needing another bus, another motor homes. Actually, I'm probably a little smaller since now it's just me and Sonny in there. So uh, you pray with me, all right? You pray. And I want to make the right decision. In fact, there's one in Shelbyville I looked at before I left. The man that has it is a Christian man. I told him, I said, you got a problem. He said, what's that? I said, if this is the unit that God wants me to have, you won't be able to sell it. It'll still be here when I get back. And by the way, you know what I'm really praying? That he will sell it if it's not what God wants me to have. I just want his will, amen? But, oh, I've had vehicles that ended up in the junkyard that beforehand they were good vehicles. I don't want you to be in a spiritual junkyard. How'd they get in the junkyard? Quickly, listen, quickly. I, some of them ended up there. If you drive by a junkyard, you got them up here in Maryland too. They have to put up fences where you can't see them like you used to. But, uh, hey, uh, you, you look at those vehicles in the junkyard, listen to me. Some of them are there because one day they started missing. You know what I'm talking about. You're driving down the road and I was like, that thing hiccups, burps or whatever it does. Anyway, it starts missing. Starts missing. Uh, talking about that bus, it was doing that back the latter part of last year. We came back from Virginia up here, the East Coast, and that thing was doing that all the way back. I get back home and I said, man, something's wrong. I got it checked out. It needed a fuel pump. $900 to put a fuel pump on that thing. Now, I love diesels. It's a diesel rig. And they're great while they're running. But when they ain't running, it'll cost you a fortune. I put a new fuel pump on it. We got ready to go to the next meeting. I start him up, and it's doing the same thing. In fact, I couldn't even get it to go. It's got, a, it's got a system that they call it a, a limp mode. In other words, if the motor ain't running right, you can't drive it. It's to keep you from destroying the engine. <laughs> I was ready to destroy more than the engine. It wouldn't go. So I had to send it to a shop, and this time I picked a better shop over in another town just to get it towed there since it wouldn't run. They wouldn't come work on it there. Just to get it towed there was over $600. I get it towed there, and he calls me and tells me, we've checked it out. You need a fuel pump. I said, I just replaced the fuel pump. He said, no, 
It's got three fuel pumps on it. That Cummins diesel out there has three fuel pumps on it. He said, the one you need, said, yeah, it's a good thing you replaced that other one, but said, that's not the one. One you need is the high-pressure fuel pump on the top of the engine. Well, it won't run without a fuel pump, so what do you do? You say, well, put it on there. Why are you calling me? Go ahead and fix it. He said, I thought I'd better call and tell you how much that fuel pump is. I said, well, I just put that other one on there. Getting it put on was $900. He said, yeah, but this high-pressure fuel pump on the top of the engine, just the fuel pump is $5,000. Yeah, $5,000 just for the fuel pump. This particular company, too, charges $150 an hour, and he's telling me it was going to take forever to put it on. Yeah, I'm expecting about $10,000, but... Thank God, God took care of it. We got it running. She runs like a top. It's just it's coming apart. <laughs> but she's, that engine's running good right now. And so, but you pray. I want to get something that God would have us to get. And then I'm afraid that what's left of this one may end up in the junkyard. But oh, I've had many a vehicle that started missing. You say, what's that got to do spiritually? I don't need to tell you, Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. You know why people end up in the junkyard that used to be servants of God? Many times they started missing, didn't they? First thing you know, they're not there on Sunday night. They're not there on Wednesday night. They might not even show up on Sunday morning sometime. They start missing, and the next thing you know, hey, they're not being used of God at all. They end up like a spiritual junkyard. Tell you something else. I got to give you these in a hurry. What time is it? Oh, we're all right. Hey, I've never preached. I've never preached an hour and a half. I've preached 90 minutes many times, but never an hour and a half, so don't worry about it. No. You know what? Here's something else. Some of them ended up in there because they started whining. You know, you're driving down the road and you start hearing, I said, I got a ringing in my ears. Becky said, well, (laughs) I must too, because I'm hearing it too. I'll stop. I hear this whining coming from the engine. You know what? In Numbers chapter 11, we find some, the children of God there, the children of Israel. The Bible says in verse 1, and when the people complained, you know what they did? They started whining. Hmm. Complaining. Well, that's all right. Everybody complains. No, no, no. Would to God we learn to be content in whatever state we're in. Come on. I've had to learn to be content whatever state I'm in. I told somebody tonight, they asked me if I went to Arkansas. I said, yeah, I've preached all over the United States and parts of Arkansas. Somebody else said Paul wasn't a Texan. If he'd have been a Texan... He wouldn't be content in any other state. But I know this, we ought to be content and not always grumbling, griping, and complaining because the Bible said it displeased the Lord. He's not happy. And here's another line, and the Lord heard it. 
Nobody else may have paid much attention to your whining, but the Lord heard it. And when he heard it, his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the utmost parts of the camp. You better quit your complaining. You're whining. Ah, you may end up facing the judgment of God, the anger of God, and end up in a junkyard. Tell you another one. These, these are just things that I got thinking about when I realized that so many people end up in the junkyard. James chapter 1, James said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, verse 19, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. And the main thing he's telling us about is that wrath because verse 20 said, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You know why some vehicles end up in the junkyard? They start running hot. <laughs> you know I'm telling you the truth. They start running hot. Least little thing ticks them off. They start getting mad, getting angry. When God said we ought to be slow to wrath. Uh, let me hit another one real quick. Some of them are in the junkyard because they started smoking. <laughs> you see, that ain't natural. In fact, that's why now they test a lot of them. That's, we don't have any of those kind of things in Tennessee. It's a good thing. My vehicles would never pass those things. We don't have them too much down there. Y'all do up here. They'll check and see how much smoke that thing's putting out. Mm. Why? Because it ain't supposed to be smoking. If it is, something's wrong. <laughs> Come on, you see. How many of you still love me? Stick up your hand. Come on, still love me? Oh, I lost a bunch of you on that one. My mama had a car one time that smoked so bad, the smoke billowed up around the hood and would come out. You'd drive down the road and everybody would be looking at you. I, I tried not to borrow mama's car. The thing is, hey, down in Tennessee, we've got mosquito sprayers. I don't know whether you got them up here or not. Trucks go down the road and they billow all this smoke out to kill the mosquitoes. Well, guess what? In Shelbyville, with my mama's car, they didn't need a mosquito sprayer. All she had to do was drive around town. There was more smoke than that thing could ever put out. Oh, you know what you, maybe, <laughs> I'm not going to give you the application. Other, hey, it's not natural. You don't need to be doing it. Now, don't, don't get upset at me. Come on. I'm fully aware s smoking won't send you to hell, but it'll make you smell like you done been there. And I know whereof I speak. The day I got saved, July the 31st, 1964, I had a pack of Winstons right here in my pocket. I pulled those things out and put a crunch on them, and threw them down. I said, I won't need them anymore. I didn't do that to get saved. Let me tell you why I did that. The reason why I did that, the young man that was telling me about Jesus, even though I smoked, if he'd have been smoking, I, I wouldn't have listened to him. And I wanted to be used of God after I got saved. I want people to listen to me, and hey, there's others that are the same way. And I knew that. So I said, I got to get rid of them things. It'd be a good idea maybe for you to stop your smoking too. Stay out of the junkyard. Be more used of God, amen. Because hey, it just gets worse. That, that old car smoked more and more and more until finally... It ended up in the junkyard. T 
tell you something else. Some of them are in there because they started leaking. You park on the concrete, and when you pull your car back out, there's a big old puddle there. It's leaking something that should have stayed on the inside. There's a lot of things maybe that you have that ought to be staying on the inside, but they keep leaking out. We call it gossip. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. The Bible says there, I like this verse, talks about women that need to look, said they, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. That shouldn't be leaking out of them. Matter of fact, did you know that the Bible said, Love covereth a multitude of sins. Somebody said, Oh, Brother Bobby, I, it, it's not gossip, it's true. Even if it's true and you're telling it with the intent to hurt somebody else, it's gossip. It's tattling. Busybody. You're leaking. It ought to be kept to yourself. You see, somebody does something and I know about it and I love them. Hey, I'm not going to be telling somebody else about it. I'd rather try to keep it a secret. Love covereth a multitude of sins. And you're going to be going around telling others. Now let me just stop and tell you this. I've been doing this for a long time. I used to years ago get people to fill out on a piece of paper, just write down the worst sin in the church. And I already had the message prepared. I'd preach on gossip. Y'all try it sometime, preacher. I promise you, every time I have ever done that, ask people in the church to tell us, write down what the worst sin in the church is, the, the number one thing when the, you tally them up is gossip. And they're the ones that said it. Now don't tell me that that's not an issue when that's the number one thing they've turned in. Evidently somebody's doing some gossiping. Running their mouths. You better watch it, friend, because there's others that are listening and you may be destroyed. For instance, you may have a, and I've, know, I've known these things to happen. You got a daughter that ends up expecting out of wedlock. And you want a, the preacher to go and talk to her, and he does. But many times he can't do anything with her. She won't listen. And many times it's because you've run your mouth about the preacher too long. You had him over for dinner on Sunday. And I don't mean him coming over and eating. I'm talking about roasted preacher. But I didn't like what he said this morning. I, I, I didn't like that special choir saying. And I didn't like this and that. Go ahead. Keep doing that. Wait till you have a boy that ends up in jail and you call the preacher and say, Preacher, will you go talk to him? And he does. But that boy doesn't listen to the preacher because he's heard too much junk out of you running your mouth and gossiping and complaining. Whining. That's another one. Come on. You keep it up. Keep the leaking up. You'll end up in the junkyard. I'll tell you another one. Some of them stop steering. They're not going the right way. I love what the psalmist said in Psalm 32. David said there in Psalm 32 and verse 7, he said, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Hey, you go the right way, you can stay out of trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Verse 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee 
with mine eye. Boy, when a car stops steering right, you're in trouble. You're headed for an accident. 1 Timothy 1.19 talks about those that are shipwrecked. Ah, oh, you, can, you can wreck because the thing wouldn't steer. Hey, we need power steering. God's power. We need, need to let him guide. I got one more. I, I hope you got these. How to, end up, how to avoid the junkyard? Don't start. Don't, just don't start missing. Don't start whining, running hot, smoking, leaking. Stops, can't stop steering. Some end up there because they wouldn't stop. Their brakes didn't work. One of Miss Becky's favorite verses was 1 Corinthians 15. Where the Bible says in verse 34, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. You know why I need to stay away from sin? It's because there's a lot of people that don't know Him. And they won't listen. And He said, I speak this to your shame. You got to learn how to stop. Sin not. Hey, there was a fellow in John chapter 5 that Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. Told him, take up your bed and walk, and he did. Guess what happened? <laughs> he gets in trouble for carrying a bed on the Sabbath day. They throw him out. <laughs> but Jesus found him. Aren't you glad when Jesus, when you know Jesus... Others may throw you out, but Jesus will be there. Jesus found him, and he said, hey, go back, sin no more. A few chapters later, they brought Jesus a woman taken in adultery. You know what he told her. Anybody condemn you? No, Lord, neither do I condemn thee. Go back and sin like you've been doing. No. Go back, sin no more. Friend, there are times when you need to put on the brakes. Romans 6, I used that this morning. Sin shall not have dominion over you. You need to work on stopping some things. Getting, out of your, getting them out of your life. Because otherwise, even some of these that's been so faithful, they're liable to end up in the junkyard. No longer used. No longer serving. Don't do that. Keep on keeping on. I told you I've been many a junkyard. Let me tell you something I've never seen. A brand new vehicle in the junkyard. One that hadn't been wrecked, hadn't been hurt. It's just in the junkyard. You want to you see the problem is some people they're not new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when you know it, I'd bring it back to being saved. First thing you better make sure of, that you've been born again. That you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. Then if you have, I hope you maybe wrote down some of those things. He said, I'm, going to, I'm not ever going to start that. I'm going to stay away from that because I want God to use me. I want to be a vessel of honor. I don't want to be a castaway. I don't want to end up in the junkyard. Heads bowed just for a moment. How many of you say, Brother Bobby, I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. And I really want God to use me more. Every day, would you slip up your hand right now? God bless you, every hand almost in the whole building. If you'll listen to God, you can stay out of the junkyard. I thank God. God's allowed me to go now for about 53 years since that, day, that night I surrendered to preach.
I'm glad. Thank, in fact, let me tell you. That night, that Wednesday night, I just simply told God, I said, God, if you open up a door, I'll go through it. And if you close the door, I won't try to kick it open. And now for the last over 50 years, God's just been opening up doors. Giving this old boy opportunity after opportunity to preach God's word. I don't want to be in a junkyard. I want to be used of God. I'm going to pray for every one of you just raised your hand. Maybe you need to come down here to this old-fashioned altar and kneel and say, God, I want you to keep using me. Use me more every day. More like the master I would ever be. Maybe there's some of you right now that if you don't quit some of the things we preached about tonight, you know you're headed for the junkyard. God's not going to be able to use you not because of him throwing you out, but because you've messed up your life and men cast it out. Maybe there's somebody that's not saved. Will you come to me or to the pastor? Say, I want to make sure I'm saved. Maybe you need to let God cleanse you of some of that stuff. Brother Lee's playing an old song that says, Cleanse me. Cleanse me. By the way, most of those vehicles in that junkyard are filthy. They're dirty. They need some cleansing. They need some oiling up. The oil in the Bible is the Holy Spirit of God. Maybe you need to let the Holy Spirit of God oil you up tonight. Make you useful. Not set aside. Thank God for an altar that's full. I love to see this. If you're unable to kneel, sit on that front pew. It's all right, but just your coming is recognizing that God spoke to you tonight. And that you want to be used of God. Thank God for all these others. Would you join them? Father, whatever the need is in any heart and life, I pray you'd meet it. I thank you for these workers here in this place and the great job that they do and how they minister. But Lord, you may have spoken to one of them tonight and said, hey, if you want to continue to be used, you're going to have to stop some of this stuff. You're going to have to learn to put on the brakes. You're going to have to learn to be guided by the Lord and get the steering straightened out. Whatever the need is, Lord, help us to avoid the junkyard. In Jesus' name we pray. You need to be saved? Come on. You need to join these others? Come on. Hey! There's plenty of other jobs around this church that need to be done. Come to the preacher and say, Preacher, find a job for me. I'll guarantee you he will. I'll guarantee you there's something you can do for God. But first of all, let him cleanse you. It's page 471 in your hymn books. 471, I love this song. It's exactly what David prayed over in the Psalms. Search me, O oh God. Let him search you tonight. Let's stand to our feet. God bless all you that came. I pray God would use you mightily. Sing it with me. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. He said this too. Try me, oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray, see if there be some wicked way, some wicked way in me. Here's what he needs to do, cleanse me. 
from every sin and set me free. Oh, I love that song. I sing it a lot in revival because I especially like the last verse. I want you to sing the last verse with me. I've only been here for Sunday and Wednesday, but I hope some of you got a little bit of a revival. And the way to have that revival is to make this your prayer. Start the work in me. In me. Ah, the old spiritual said, not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. It's me. Instead of looking around somebody else, say, God, use me. Start revival. Salisbury Baptist Temple because of me. Hey, sing that last verse with me. Oh, Holy Ghost, revival comes from Thee. I can't bring it. Send a revival. Make this your prayer. Start the work. Thy word declares Thou wilt supply our need. What a blessing that would be. For blessing now, O Lord, I humbly Amen. Man, that was great, wasn't it? Man, that helped me. I love it. I don't want to end up in a junkyard. And, uh, boy, I've, I don't know about you, but I've been at the gate a few times. Amen? <laughs> and the old devil, he wanted to push me right on through. And uh, by the grace of God, and uh, he rescued me. The Holy Ghost wrecker pulled me out. Amen? And uh, he got me going again. And I hope that's the case for you tonight. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, the devil wants, he is always going to work. He is like a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may make into junk. Amen. And I love what he said in the beginning. I don't know if you caught that or not. It's not God that makes us a castaway. Okay. It's our decisions that do that. Amen. And so oftentimes God gets the blame for our foolishness. We're not being used of God like we could and blessed of God like we should. And we seem to just get upset about God. And instead of getting on our knees and, and asking the Lord, Lord, what is it in me that, God, you're trying to do? And more than the blessing and more uh, than even being used of God, we ought to desire to be right with him. Amen? And, uh, boy, the rest of it will fall in place. And we all struggle with that, every one of us in this room. The devil will never, never uh, cease to try uh, hey, listen, somebody said, you know, the devil's always going to be after you, but as long as he's just nipping at my heels, we're okay still. Amen? You know, if he's nipping on my heels, he's behind me. Amen? I'm going forward uh, for the Lord. And so uh, that's just great, Brother Bobby. Thank you so much. Man, what a great message, and I needed that. And I'm sure how many here tonight say, Preacher, that was good. I needed that tonight. Amen? I did. Both my hands are up, and uh, praise the Lord. I knew Brother Todd needed that for sure tonight. Amen? I was thinking about him tonight. But no. <laughs> oh, amen. Well, thank you, Brother McGilliard, and uh, thank you, Brother Lee. Thank you, Miss Mary. Thank you, Miss Caitlin. What a blessing these folks are. Let's give them a big hand. Would you do that? <clears throat> thank you, Brother Bobby. Appreciate that so much. Hey, y'all, do pray for that meeting this week, and an order of a bless, and open hearts and doors, and then also for that uh, motor home. Now, he's looking at... Uh, I think he's got the guy down from about 50000 to forty-five, And I think maybe we just got to pray that God gets him down to a donation. Amen? 
And the guy, and the guy uses it a, as a tax write-off and gives it to uh, the evangelist. And so we need to pray about that. And we're going to do that in just a moment, Brother Bobby. And if you, if the Lord's blessed you in a way and you want to do a special offering, you know, you just uh, make it out to the church if you like. And, of course, I do that to give it to the church, and we'll send it on to him. And, uh, and so, uh, but anyway, we're just uh, thankful for your ministry all these years, still going for God. Amen. Hey, listen, what Brother Bobby's been through, uh, a lot of us would have quit. Amen. A lot of us would have quit. It hadn't always been easy for Brother Bobby, and, uh, and it's been hard. I mean, and as he gets older, it gets tougher, but he just keeps on rolling on for the Lord. Amen? And I uh, appreciate the servant heart, this man right here. I, I watched him last couple of days uh, just take care of him. I mean, and he always had 45 years, has it been? You've been with him? And uh, just uh, a servant. Uh, this man right here is Joshua. And this is Moses in this team. And uh, he is just a servant to this man right here. And Brother Bobby would admit the fact that God has used your ministry in a great way because of this man and his wife and his family and uh, for 45 years. And uh, thank you, Brother Lee. Thank you for being an example of a servant and uh, serving uh, this evangelist, this preacher, and uh, serving God in that way. And we praise the Lord for that. All righty, Brother Todd, come on up, and uh, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless. I'm going to ask Brother Bobby if you can make your way out toward the foyer. And, uh, and of course, you're going to play before you go out. Hey, man, they can play every instrument, amen? And I bet you can't play the tub, though. You ever played the tub? You have played the tub? I bet you can't play it. Oh, no, no, I'm no, no, I'm talking about the bass tub. You know what I'm talking about. Have you ever played that before? Have you really? I bet you're as good as I am. Well, I have to have a tub off here sometime, all right? Amen, amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, mercy. All right, well, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for a great day, and thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the decisions in the hearts of the folks that are here tonight. And, Lord, we all needed, Lord, this message this morning about Calvary. Uh, Lord, to be reminded of, Lord, the price that you paid. And, Lord, there's nothing, no sacrifice that I would ever make in my life that would ever compare and even come close to the sacrifice you made for me on Calvary. And, Lord Jesus, we love you and thank you for that. And, Lord, help me. Help us tonight, all of us, Lord, not uh, to allow the devil to woo us in to become a castaway and end up in the junkyard. And, uh, Father, you can, wonderful thing is, if we ever did, uh, Lord, there's a lot of cars in the junkyard that are restored and made like new. And, God, you can do that. And maybe, Lord, even tonight, a live stream or even in the service, somebody is thinking, I'm in a junkyard. There's no way that I could ever be used again. Oh, oh, yes, there is. Lord, you're in the restore business, and that's what you do. You restore us. And, Lord, you can do that. And you can use us and make us valuable and honorable, Lord, no matter, Lord, what we've done. And God, we thank you for that, Lord. We love you. Appreciate you so much. And thank you again for this time this week, this weekend. And bless this coming Sunday as we honor veterans, Lord, and their families for their service and uh, for their sacrifices for our freedom. And, uh, Lord, we just pray that you would uh, be with us this week as we pass out flyers and uh, 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 tracks that, God, you would open hearts and doors and opportunities to give the gospel. And we'll praise you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, amen. amen. Let's sing the chorus of Constantly Abiding, just the chorus. Constantly abiding, Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding, rapture divine. He never leaves me lonely, whispers also kind. I will never leave thee, Jesus is mine. Please drive carefully, have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Have a great night. Thank you, Miss Janice. Thank you, Brother Lee.